Hey folks, so, uh, another amazing crowd. Um, Friday night was unreal. Our student section just showed up big and, and really just the energy in the, in the place was phenomenal. It's been really every week, every home game. Uh, so we appreciate the support we're getting from everybody, especially with, uh, you know, just the season not going as we'd like. I know everybody's frustrated with the win loss, but I think they're also, uh, you know, aware of, of just the schedule we've played and how these guys are growing up and, and improving. I do think we've improved. I thought we played our most complete game. Uh, but at the end of the day, I said this uh, Friday night, Fresno made plays that they needed to make uh, in critical situations, and, and we just didn't. Uh, there's some inexperience that still shows up. There's some lack of discipline at times shows up. There's some miscommunication that shows up. All the above, just things that we got to coach them out of. It's our job, mine and our staff. We got to find ways to to really break through with this group and get uh, beyond those mistakes that cost us the other night and, and, and move past getting close and get to the point where, where we're finding ways to win. Um, you know, I, I got to keep it in perspective. I think it's really, really important. <clears throat> I know it's been a lot of talk about the four opponents that we've lost to and their records been good, good teams, but we're, we're capable of being a good team as well. And so that's the frustration is getting past that point of, some of the untimely mistakes and and issues that that have kept us from being able to get over the hump against teams that we're really close to beating. So we gotta we gotta keep working. Uh, it doesn't get any easier. We gotta go on the road and find a way to get a win against a team that can score a lot of points. And it's always been uh, you know, really a last last series of the game type of win for us in in previous games against San Jose. And I know their record doesn't look great, but they are a much better team than their record indicates. I think we are as well. And we're both fighting for our lives at this point uh, in terms of bowl eligibility and league play. And so it'll be a, it'll be a battle. What questions do you have? That was quick. Patrick Mayhorn with the Ag Ship. I'll ask about the, the health of the team. Where are you guys at right now? A little beat up. Uh, it's still too early to tell. Um, you know, the extra day could be helpful in some areas, but uh, it's been a physical run without a, without an open week yet. There's guys that are battling through. Uh, you know, I don't have any uh, absolute, you know, can't play for sure answers for you yet, but we're, we're beat up. The next couple of days are going to be important that we recover well and try to get some guys back on the field, um, you know, if possible. Trent Wood with Deseret News. You referenced the conference race. I'm curious, how often do you have conversations with the team about the conference race, or is it just something that you guys, everybody's aware of, but you don't talk about it? Yeah, just aware of it. We don't, we're talking about the process, trying to get better every week, try to be 1-0 and every week, be the best team we can we can be. And and so what happens there, if, if you do enough good things, then you're in that conversation. If you don't, you're not. Uh, Try to be process driven, not not results driven, uh, and really focus on the things you can control, uh, and eliminating mistakes and and playing with great effort and just improving every week are the things that you you can and you know what what happens within and the conference is just so far away from what we can we can handle we don't we don't really discuss it. With 106.9 The Fan, um, how did you spend your Saturday not having a game to prepare for or play? Uh, what, what, did you get to watch any other college football games on Saturday? I watched ball all day long. Um, I really did. I watched ball all day long. I was able to get uh, – stayed here Friday night after the game and 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 went through our entire game till 1.30 or so in the morning. And then um, Saturday I, I literally just watched – games and uh, tried to be a fan. Honestly, I tend to watch it as a coach anyway, but watch some really good games in our league and and some opponents we're going to be playing soon and watch some good games just across the country. So for one day, I just chilled on the couch with my wife and kiddos and watched a bunch of ball. Along those lines, what did you think of the Wyoming Air Force game or the Colorado State game with Boise? What did you think of those games? Uh, those are wild games. There's no doubt. I and mean, that's welcome to the Mountain West. You better better be ready every week. Um, yeah, I got a chance to watch both. I probably should have gone to bed a little earlier than I did, but I stayed up and watched all the way down to the Hail Mary 
with the Colorado State game, and it was, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was kind of like watching us, man. They got themselves in a hole and dug their way back and made some big plays down the stretch. That was a crazy finish. The uh, Wyoming Air Force game was about it, what I expected, two big physical power running teams and going right at each other. Um, you know, you hate to see the quarterback go down at Air Force. He'd been playing at such a high level, uh, but uh, they overcame adversity and found a way to get a win. It's really good football in our league all across the board. Even even watch some of the Hawaii-San Diego State game as well. I think everybody's, everybody's battling and just remind yourself you better be ready every week. At KSL.com, uh, you had MJ Tafisi with a career high in tackles. He's currently leading the team in tackles, and he's also been around for a while. Him and Hale Matuapuaka have been huge in kind of building some longevity and um, staying with the team for a while. What does it mean to have those two and their leadership on the defensive side of the ball? Yeah, well, Hale's been here longer than I have. So, you know, you just look at him, and I know there was an article about him last week, just what this place means to him and just how much pride he has in being – uh, an Aggie and 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 stuck it out and you know had plenty of opportunities to leave along the way. I don't know if people really are truly aware of just how many opportunities he's had to to transfer and and maybe uh, even benefit from NIL in in a way that that he wasn't able to hear along his journey until now. I mean, it just says a lot about him uh, how much he cares about this place. His brothers here now and they wanted to do it together. So. I mean, this is this is his home, and and he's done a tremendous job here, help us win a championship, and just continue to grow like we are at this point. MJ came in in a different way, but it's meant just as much, you know, coming in from Washington and plugging in immediately, and and has played extremely hard. He's such a great kid, worked so hard, played through injury as well. I mean, they they've both been great leaders for us on defense. Patrick Mayhorn again. San Jose State has some new faces this year. Obviously, had some big time players leave after this last season, graduate. Um, offensively, though, they're still, like you said, very, very good. What are they doing on that side of the ball this season? They look a little bit different. You know, that we've always kind of thought of them as a West Coast or a, uh, I'm sorry, a um, air raid type team. You know, purely, you know, purely spread out and slinging the ball. But they're they're playing with multiple tight ends, a lot of shifts and motions and eye candy and, and really making the matchups difficult for you. Uh, it's a little bit of a change from what we've seen in the past. And they've always, they've always used the tight end, but a lot more window dressing, a lot of more eye candy than, than maybe what we've seen in, in the last couple of years from them. The quarterback obviously makes things go. He can run, he can throw. He's a dynamic uh, when he does get out of the pocket. And, and as you mentioned, they've done a good job recruiting some skilled players to fit their system so the matchups are going to be difficult, but it is a little different than what we've we've seen in previous years from them. So, oh, Cal Lewis, I was going to ask you the same thing. It looks like they're running the ball more, and yeah. they're really using Robinson. And then this other guy came in and had more than hundred or more than ten yards of carry against Mexico. Yeah, it just it just looks a little different. I don't know if injuries or they just found some things that they feel like work for them, but it's not the traditional, you know, spread, quick game, um, air raid type system that we've come to know. They, they're finding some other ways to be effective. It creates some problems for you. I know Joe, you know, compared to previous years to what we're looking at now, you know, it, he's like, he'd done a lot of prep work and, and now he's having to kind of change his thought process a little bit because they've, they've found some other ways to be effective. If you run the ball well, it opens everything up and takes a lot of pressure off your quarterback and your throw game. And that seems to be what they're doing better at this point than, than any that we've seen in the last couple of years. We're on defense, they have been a team that's had a lot of sacks the last couple of years. They don't have many. They've got new guys, obviously, there. But they don't give up a lot, and then they get a lot of turnovers. Yeah, they're, I think they do a good job of creating turnovers. They always have. Their front has been dynamic in the last couple of years, and they've lost some guys just like we have to transfer and to graduation. But they still have the ability to get after you. And, and you watch even the, the game early in the year against USC. They gave their off offensive line – Tons of trouble all day long. Um, yeah, they have the ability to be versatile. They can get to a lot of looks without having to change a whole lot. They they have speed in the back end uh, to cover, but um, but I, I think it does start with their front. Their their front seven is solid and and, and plays with extremely high motors. So you you got to keep out. You got to outwork them. You got to match that intensity and outwork them and, and be sound. 
Coach Brian Priest, KSLSports.com. You mentioned briefly on uh, Friday night that McKay might be available this weekend. And, you know, with that in mind, you've also said that you don't believe in a guy losing his job because of injury. So with the, the play of Cooper Lagat, quarterback, where are you at in that decision-making process? How is McKay's recovery looking? McKay's moving forward at the right pace. Now, today's a big day for him, too. Just He's got to finalize all his protocol and make sure there's no issues. I haven't made a final decision yet. I felt, felt like Coop did a really, really good job in McKay's absence, and, and he did grow up from some of his earlier issues. Well, it wasn't without mistakes, and, and still kind of the decision for me is, you know, just what gives us the best chance to be successful moving forward. That's – that's the ultimate answer is what, who and what allows us to be the most successful. So still want to just kind of continue to analyze it. Haven't made a final decision. A lot will depend on how McKay's doing today with the trainers and doctors. And is he really progressing at the rate that we need him to before we make a final decision? Jared Branson. If they're both healthy, coach, do you practice both of them uh, equally in reps this week? Or how does that work? When do you make that decision? Uh, you know, if 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 I make a decision before tomorrow's practice, exactly who's going to be the starter, then the starter will get more reps. But but even even over the last few weeks, when uh, or during the time that McKay was the starter and Coop was the backup, uh, I was more probably a little bit more equal with the reps than I typically would be. I want to make sure Coop continued to get to develop and had, was ready in case the opportunity opportunity to play presented itself, and it did. And I'm glad we did, but. Uh, you know, once I make a final decision on who the guy is and, and how we're progressing, then there will be a stagger. It, it won't be equal. Probably, you know, 60-40 is, is probably the best you could hope for. Chuck Franson again. And talking about the shifting back to Cordero, how similar or different is he in the San Jose State offense as opposed to what you saw in him in Hawaii? Well, I just think they were so much more organized offensively for him. Uh, we saw that last year. It really fits his skill set. He's got uh, he, he has all the tools to be dynamic. I, I just felt like that what we were seeing at Hawaii was a little disorganized. Not sure that that he was really getting the opportunity to get comfortable. He didn't have the skilled players that he has now. Uh, so the weapons changed. Uh, he just it just seemed to be a really good fit for him. Uh, and and when he's played well, they've they've been really tough to defend and clearly they scored a bunch of points this last week uh, against New Mexico. And, you know, even though New Mexico's record may not be great, I just have always felt like they're extremely difficult to move the ball against. We've struggled uh, last year, especially to move the ball against them with what they do and to put the points up they did is, is saying a lot. So uh, I, I think he makes everything go and he's been much more comfortable in that environment than what you saw at Hawaii, just in my opinion, without without having to talk to the kid or just looking at him on tape. Chuck Mayhorn again. I want to ask about just the program that Brent Brennan has built there in a, in a place that has not had a ton of consistency, um, now having a ton of consistency under him. What, what do you think of the job that he has done at San Jose State? I think he's done a great job. I mean, Brent, number one, he's a really good friend of mine, and I know him very, very well. Uh, you're right. He's been at a place where – He's had to do a lot of things off the field as well. They've built a new facility there. I think he was very instrumental in raising money and, and getting the the energy behind that program to to do those things, to win the championship during the COVID year uh, and beat Boise the way they did. I mean, those are things that just hadn't been done ever at that place. So, um, you know, you go there and there's energy in the stands and they're hard to beat in recruiting. I know they're doing things in NIL and Austin money and funding things to, to give them a chance to be – successful and I don't think any of that happens if you don't have a guy that's uh you know out in front leading things and I think there's just he's got a personality that people want to be around I, he's a good friend he's been a good friend both on and off the field for me and he and Courtney his wife are, have been really really close to my family for quite a while through a lot of adversity off the field and uh, proud just you know proud to call him a friend but also really proud of the job he's done now I want him to win all of them but one to be honest with you and on Saturday night I want to make sure that that uh, when we shake hands, that somehow we found a way to get the win. Trenwood again, how valuable are trips to California like this weekend and then for San Diego State as far as recruiting goes, visibility of the program? Yeah, it's important. I mean, it's a heavy 
that's a heavy spot for us. We've got commitments from there already and, and recruit there. And if you look at our roster, you, you're aware that the California JCs and the high school ranks are, are places that we have to recruit. And to be able to be visible out there, play well out there, uh, I think all that matters. I mean, you got to have a brand that is consistent. And, and I think, um, I think you know, what, what you do when you're in there in an environment, they get a chance to see you up close and personal is always important. another question um this is a couple weeks old but kyle van lewin announced his retirement on instagram i think three weeks ago now i'm curious what went into that and is he still allowed to be around the program what's his involvement with the program he's still ran a lot uh he's taken on a new role i think his his role now is to beat as many people as ping pong as he possibly can on a daily basis uh bring morale to the team he's always got a smile on his face and and, and just energy that i think is really really helpful he loves this place, didn't want to, to retire. Uh, he had just had multiple knee injuries. The damage that had been done there was something that was not going to get better. You know, they repaired what they could, but the pain and swelling and just, um, I don't know, man, arthritis and all the above in the joint would not allow for him to even practice, let alone play, without substantial swelling and pain on a daily basis. He agonized over the decision, prayed about it a lot. We talked about it a good bit. He and his family took some time away to really finalize it. But I, I think ultimately he knew that was really his only choice uh, or or he was going to be looking at further further and long-term damage. And I mean, he wants to raise kids and, you know, be able to put them up on his shoulders and sort, sorts of things that a dad wants to do. And, and any time that he would continue to play would have maybe affected his ability to do that and so we we supported it, hated it, but supported it. Anything else? Appreciate it. So well, Al Lewis from KBNU, but the one that got away, the touchdown that you didn't get. Can you describe <laughs> that play and how well it worked, and what was your feeling about everything after that all happened? Yeah, so we so we ran a screen play right there, and it just opened up really well. Our O line got down the field, and once I seen the opening, I just went with it. And I wasn't sure that it got called back at the time until I looked up after the play and seen it. But it was, it was okay. We got it back later in the game. We wish it would have counted because it would have probably put us ahead to win the game. But we got to look for it now. I'll ask you another one then. All three of you running backs are playing. Do you feel like you do something a little different than the other guys better or whatever that gives you a chance to do a few other plays that maybe they don't get? Or how does that work? No, we, we all bring they're, – they're two great backs as well. And we all bring different things to the table. We have great relationships. So, like, we work, we work really well together. And I think how coaches, like, using us and rotating us is working perfectly for the team. So, Brian Priest, KSLSports.com. Uh, I know pass protection is something that has come up in the past, uh, it, you know, a re requirement for running backs to be able to get on the field. How do you feel like your development has been in, in that department? And then just running the ball overall, how, how comfortable are you feeling in this offense? Yeah, so I struggled earlier in the season with pass protection, but I feel like that's something I've been working on a lot extra like after practice and stuff, I've been doing more things to help me with that. And like really just studying film a lot more. So I'm prepared with what they're bringing, like different blitzes they're bringing. So I feel like I've been picking up on it a lot well from like the beginning of the season, but running the ball, I feel like I've been doing a good job with the opportunities that's been given to me. And I just, I know I got a lot more in the tank. So I look to pick it up here and next week versus San Jose. Eric Franson with 106.9 The Fan. Um, what are you seeing initially from San Jose and their, their defense and especially what they try to do to stop the run? 
Yeah, so we just um, we start on San Jose today. So I'll know a lot more this afternoon when we go when we break down the film on them, and as we go throughout the week. But this weekend, I just rested and I haven't really watched too much film on them yet. To follow up, how did you spend your Saturday without a game? Did you watch a lot of football or did you just take the time to uh, rest and, and relax? Yeah, so I watched a lot of football. I watched a, a few of my um, old teammates I played with in high school and at my junior college. And, a, and then I went down to Snow College to see them play as well this weekend. Some of the guys that you've played with, Russell, before that are playing. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Or who are some of the guys that are playing at other schools that you have played with before that you watch? Yeah, so I watch um, Keontae Scott. He plays at Auburn. He's a defensive back. Cortez Hogan, he plays at Boise State. He's a D lineman. Um, Marquise Montgomery, receiver at Cal. It's a long list, so a few guys, yeah. Hi, KSL.com. Uh, you lead the team in sacks. You're, you, you've had a pretty successful season. Uh, and you play right next to Hale Motuapuaka. He's been there for a really long time. You're still a little bit newer to the program. What does it mean to be able to play next to a guy like that? Uh, well, he's a he's a great leader. I mean, on and off the field, I hang out with him a lot. Um, he's just a good guy in general, a uh, good father. So it's always fun playing with him. And um, he has got a lot of experience and uh, things to talk about when it comes to game time. So he's helped me a lot in that category. Al Lewis from KBNU in Logan, Utah. I just looked up last year. You played in two games, is what it says in the stats. I don't know if that's right or not, but yeah, that's right. You played Alabama, I think, was one of them. Maybe you got in or something. But can you tell me what you learned so fast or whatever to get into it this year? With when we had the the guys leave a defensive end and needed you to play so fast and so much, can you tell us about that experience of going through that and trying to get ready for this year? Well, um, just uh, prior to them leaving. Uh, they told me so just I knew that I had opportunity and I just uh, had to um, work hard and just get ready for the season. Um, playing against Alabama, it was, the, it was definitely a huge change was the speed of the game uh, compared to uh, for, um, high school ball. So, yeah. Then was the, the transformation for you as much mental getting ready to really play a lot or did, did you do a lot of physical mm -hmm. things? To get there this year, then Paul. Uh, I'd, I'd, I gained about like ten pounds, but it was definitely a mental part, especially um, the new, uh, you know, the playbook, the new uh, defensive coordinator, and um, how how much bigger uh, the playbook is, you know. Um, but yeah, definitely a lot more um, on the mental side for sure. Eric France with 106.9 The Fan. Uh, just, uh, you know, this week you've got another uh, dynamic offense, uh, a quarterback who can sling the ball all over the yard. Um, you know, the the I guess just the, the progression for you and that defensive front and trying to get after quarterbacks like that so far this season for you. I mean, yeah, we just got to keep good lane integrity when we're pass rushing and um, make sure to keep them in uh, side the pocket and crush it down. Um, I haven't looked in too much about San Jose State, but – um, today we're going to be going through that. Um, just, yeah, just keep them in the pocket. Make sure that we could be able to set edges right and um, be able to have good eyes and discipline. So, Paul, if you can remember the last year's game, if maybe you didn't play against San Jose, but you have been there and watched us. Remember, he was the guy almost individually, their quarterback. He's back, who kind of brought them back into the game with his legs yeah. and with his arms and things like that. Do you remember anything about that game last year that comes to your mind? I remember. I remember it was a close game. It was a good one. Um, uh, came down right to the wire. So. Uh, he's a great player. I will, you know, got to keep respect for him and um, can't go unnoticed. Uh, just got to be ready to play. Just preparation through the week. Let me ask you one more. Uh, I know you're not exactly from here in the Valley, but when you're as close as you are to Idaho Falls to here or close to that, do you feel like this is kind of a little bit uh, a hometown team or you're not too far away from home or you kind of have a little bit of pride for the area or whatever? Right, for sure. I mean, um, my family's originally from Utah. My dad grew up here in Logan, so I definitely know the spot very well. My brother lives down here as well, so it's good to 
um, have a lot of family out here, be able to have a, um, that presence. So, yeah, a lot of similarities between where I'm from and here as well.